Assembly of the people of the Lower Niger, which is today wrongly called South South Southeast, was held on Monday, April 27, 2015, at the Atlantic Hall of the Hotel Presidential in Port Harcourt. It had the theme towards a referendum for self determination for the peoples of the Lower Niger. The solemn assembly, which was chaired by veteran war hero Ikemba Colonel Joe Oseluka Achuzia, was put together for a soul searching by the peoples of the Lower Niger which is made up of the ethnic nations of the old eastern and mid-western regions, aimed at exploring lawful avenues for the exercise of the fundamental rights to self-determination, self-rule, as provided for by the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous People, 2007. The program was convened by the Lower Niger Congress and had in attendance ethnic delegations and speakers, including Fred Agbeyegbe Esquire, President of the Lower Niger Congress, Tony Nnadi, Secretary General, Lower Niger Congress, T.K. Ogoriba, among many others. The Assembly had in attendance a large number of foreign and local media, print and electronic. Hilda Dokubo, a highly respected voice in the Lower Niger and beyond, along with Tonya Douglas, a respected broadcaster, anchored the solemn Assembly with some remarks. Anyway, I'll help answer the question. We are here because we are tired. Yes. And we are tired of being tired. Yes. To the microphones and we speak to people eyeball to eyeball. Oh, That's why we are here. We are using the globally acceptable strategy and format to demand that which our fathers have been demanding for. Yes. So from blow no go blow, let the law bust. Yes. Nobody will blow any blow blow. Yes. So if they are waiting for us to react the way that we have always reacted, they will wait for a very long time. Because we have changed the driver and we have changed the vehicle. It is no longer the German speaking for the Germans, or the Igbo man speaking for the Igbos, or the big man speaking. It is us speaking for us. We are the people. We the people. That's why we are here. We are that people. Enough of this slavery. Enough of this journey. We're tired. We are absolutely tired. The chairman of the Solemn Assembly, Ikemba Colonel Joe Achuzia, gave his address. Over the years, since the amalgamation, the world's company is the divisive fashion in which they carry out the program of denying us the right of self-determination. Who is that one now? The secretary has said it all. And you are saying it all in the screen before you. All I will say is that being the chairman here, I will enjoy everybody to adhere strictly to what we have discussed here. The high point of the event was the address by the President of the Lower Niger Congress, Fred Agbeyegbe Esquire. We're all mostly, except for Jonathan and Shagari, self-appointed heads of state who committed treason and coups and took over this country 
and are the people responsible for all the problems we have in this country today. And what happened? When Nigeria had a problem, they were the ones that were called to come and solve the problems they themselves had created. And who are these people? There was General Abdul Salam, the one who lied on the pages of your constitution that you came together to decide that we have agreed to be ruled by the constitution. And in a voice vote that you took earlier here today, you have said you did not have such a meeting, so how could you have had such a decision? Yes. Who was the next one? Your present president elect. The guy is a coopist. And coopists commit treason, but not in Nigeria. Here in Nigeria, they come back to come and rule you. Yes, well, you've elected him as your president, so good luck to you. <laughs> now, who is the next one? Oh, but Ibrahim Babangida. You all know the story. I don't need to repeat it. He was the one who deprived you of the party that the person that you chose as president overwhelmingly. He cancelled it. And nothing happened. They killed him in the end. And what did he do? He appointed Shoneko, who did not contest an election, to become your president, your president and head of state. I was one of those who went to court in which a court of law of Nigeria decided that, uh, that, that Shoneko's government was illegal. Since that time, at each and every council of state, Shoneko is invited and he goes. In what capacity? As a head of state, as a court of law that was not appealed, said was illegal. So what is Nigeria? A place where there is one law for the high and another law for the low. What else did you see? As we speak, all cases in court about Buhari not qualifying to contest have been thrown out. Would it have happened if it were you or me? No. Could you have gotten into the army because your principal wrote a statement saying he did not write the exam, but if he wrote it, he would pass. <laughs> so for what reason do I want to become a son? I have had the privilege of practicing law outside this country. Where the title or the equivalent of the word son comes from, where they say you are a queen's council, is a body of people with the highest of principles. My dear brethren, in Nigeria it is not so. Now, what are we saying here today? I'm welcoming you as President of Lower Niger Congress. We put this body together to protect our interests. Because even the putting together of Nigeria in 1914 was to come and take your assets, not the assets of every Nigerian, the assets of the people of the Lower Niger. And look at all of you sat here. What is the population of the people of Lower Niger? I'm talking about Abia, uh, Rivers, Delta, Edo. As large as the area is, the population of that place is still very small compared to the resources that the God, good Lord has given to you in your backyard, under the basis of your river and all of that. That is what they all want. That is what the British wanted. That is what all the people who are now claiming that they are your masters and you are their slaves, that they want. But like my secretary has told you, the United Nations says, you have a right to self determination You cannot be forced to continue with this enslavement. 
the last try that we had was to get this country to sit down and talk about how we are going to relate to each other. What did they say in the end? It is a no-go area. So, if you want to continue as a slave, I don't. I don't. But let me remind you of one thing. It's all very well to sit here and shout as loud as you like and say ye or nay. But the test is yet to come. On the 29th of May, a successor to Amadou Bello and Utman Dambodio is going to be your president. He had at his command all the forces of oppression. He is the Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces of Nigeria. The question I want to ask you is, are you going to turn your yes into no when that time comes? It was then time for the unveiling and deep analysis of the factors which have given rise to this move for a referendum by the Lower Niger people. This was done by Tony Nnadi, the Secretary General of the Lower Niger Congress. We are not mourning either because it has pleased God at this time to let these people go. The, the video you are about to watch, so many things you've been hearing that look like folk tales. We have to break into the archives of those who tied us into this enslavement, just like we really began to do. Before we set up the plan of how we will liberate ourselves from the bondage, we had to find how they did the things. It took them over 150 years to bring us to where we have become inconsequential in the scheme of things. And therefore, with a combination of knowledge and, 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 and <coughs> practical, you know, uh, uh, we, we, we just have to do it the way they did it, better than they did it. There's no other way you could have uh, overcome it. You will see the faces of Lugard and his masters. You will see the faces of Hakot, all of those who decided that we were going to be tied up, led at hand, and handed over to a people that do not particularly wish us well, like we have just seen. And as we listen to it, it is like going to, you know, you know in the African setting, when a community gets into a problem that seems recurrent, they go to the world. What we are about to see now is like a visit to the shrine to consult with the world. It is on record that Nigeria at inception in 1914 was purely a commercial venture of the British Crown which paid the Royal Niger Company the sum of £865,000 in 1900 to acquire proprietary rights over the vast territory it later christened Nigeria. It was not a union of willing allies. To understand Nigeria, you need to appreciate where it came from. In 1900, Britain officially assumed responsibility for the administration of the whole of what we now know as Nigeria from the Niger Company. And then, gradually over the years, British protectorates were established throughout the territory. In 1914, the protectorates were amalgamated into one Nigeria. Actually, there's one additional detail that bears mentioning. In order to take over the territories from the Niger Company, the British government paid £865,000, a huge amount in 1900. So let's establish a simple truth. The British didn't travel halfway across the world just to spread democracy. Nigeria started off as a business deal for them, between a company and a government. Incidentally, the Niger Company is still around today, only it is known by a different name, Unilever. But that's another story. A cablegram made on the 31st of December 1913 by the then Secretary for the Colonies, Lord Harcourt, 
referring to the impending annexation of the Southern Protectorate to the then Northern Protectorate, declared that, We have released Northern Nigeria from the leading strings of the Treasury. The promising and well-conducted youth is now on an allowance of his own and is about to effect an alliance with a Southern Lady of Means. I have issued a special license, and Sir Frederick Lugard will perform the ceremony. May the union be fruitful and the couple constant. Thus, the words of Amadou Bello reported on Parrot newspaper on the 12th of October 1960. The new nation called Nigeria should be the estate of our great-grandfather, Usman Damfodio. We ruthlessly resist a change of power. We use the minorities of the North as willing tools and the South as a conquered territory. Never allow them rule over us and never allow them to have control over their future. Towards. One thing I've noticed, Premier, while I've been here, is that Northerners seem to have, I might almost call it, obsession about the Igbos. Could you perhaps explain that to me? Well, the Igbos are more or less the type of people whose desire is mainly to dominate everybody. If they go to a village, to a town, they want to monopolize everything in that area. If you put them in a labor camp as a laborer, within a year they will try to emerge as headman of that camp, and so on. Well, in, in the past, our people were not alive to their responsibilities, because you can see from our northernization policy that in 1952, when I came here, there weren't ten northerners in our civil service here. Then I tried to have it northernized, and now all, all important posts are being held by northerners. Is this policy of filling all key posts in the north solely with northerners and not with other Nigerians a temporary or permanent one? In actual fact, what it is, is a northerner first. If you can't get a northerner, then we take an expatriate like yourself on contract. If we can't, then we can employ another Nigerian, but on contract too. This is going to be permanent, I should say, for the, as far as I can foresee, because it will be rather dangerous to see the number of boys we are now turning from our, all our learning institutions coming out with having no, no work to do. I'm sure whichever government of the day might be, it will feel rather embarrassed, and it might even lead to bloodshed. Doesn't this damage the idea, sir, of uh, all people in all regions in, in Nigeria being fellow citizens of one country? Well, it might, but uh, um, you are, I mean, new to our region, but how many northerners are employed in the east or in the west? The answer is no. And if there are, there may be ten laborers employed only in the two regions. The assembly adopted an 1885 map of the Lower Niger Territory as the geographical basis of their proposed federation and went ahead upon presentations made by the Lower Niger Congress unanimously mandated a five-point action plan leading the referendum. We propose that this assembly adopts this map as the map of the territory we are talking about. Not Imo, not Abe, not Bayesa, not Rivers, Lower Niger. If we adopt this map, of course we are going to put it to voice vote. If we adopt this map as the basis of our union, because Nigeria's union was not discussed, was not to be discussed. You saw on the, next, on the floor of the National Conference, the first decision they took with the, south, the renegade wing of the Southwest and the relative Northern partners leading. They formed a majority and they said that we can no longer discuss the terms of our union. Was that not the first decision the National Conference took? Yeah, yes. The convener of the conference, President Rudolf Jonathan, was very clear in why he was calling the conference because we made it clear to him that that constitution that enslaved us cannot be the basis of running the Nigerian Union any further. We made it clear to him that if they carry on in the business, even if he were to win, we will not accept the 1999 constitution as basis of further business. And he called that conference. In his words, go to your archives, the 17th October of 2013, 
when he was inaugurating the Premier Gurumu Committee, he said that the conference was called to realistically examine and genuinely resolve the long standing impediments to our cohesion as a united people. These were his words. That conference decided that he had gone beyond his brief and therefore nullified and then formed 20 committees to share money. Meaning that our compatriots in vote, because I do not feel like compatriots with them, have decided that our enslavement must be permanent. That will be the first proposal to adopt. Yeah. Yeah. Rapporteurs, take note, resolution number one carry. This assembly is being invited to mandate the production of a charter so that the matter will go beyond oral discussion. That a charter that will bind the job, the robo, the shekiri, the anan, the epic, all of these language groups, everybody standing on his land, including little Isoko, little Shekiri, little Logo. That claim we make against Nigeria today will not be denied Ogoni, will not be denied Isoko, will not be denied the Shekiri on account of their size. They will be equal partners in the prospective federation of the lower Niger. Will this assembly then mandate the production of a charter that will spell out all of this so that everybody will be on the table at the time it was being put together? At the time it is being put together. Did I hear yes or no? Proposal number two adopted. Number three, these are all of your programs. Mandate for referendum. Lower Niger Congress proposes that this solemn assembly mandates the conduct of a referendum among the peoples of the Lower Niger. The same way Scotland decided recently to be or not to be in the kingdom they call the United Kingdom. We are proposing that we go by whatever mechanism to ask our people in a yes or no formation whether we want to continue in this union of attrition called Nigeria. No. No. Therefore, the assembly is saying that we will have to conduct a referendum yes. to decide. Yes. Did I hear a yes? yes. Number three, carried. Progress. The D is one in which. We look back at what Oba of Lagos said about the property of our people because that's, that's the one big black male Nigeria has had. Oh, the Igbo and their neighbors, the lower Niger and their assets that are outside the eastern Nigeria. Because in 1970, by decree, they took these assets and they never returned it to date. We are now hearing similar threats as preceded the other one, where first class traditional rulers in these two blocks speaking on behalf of their people, because Lamida Temawa is in the same status as the Emir and Kano of the Sultan in Sokoto, the one that says his kingdom transcends Nigeria. He says, that those who want resource control can go and drink their oil, but that the north will take their land and all of what whoever else may have built on it, starting with that country. And therefore, Lower Niger Congress proposes, and it's not a new proposal. We have made that proposal since 2012. Ebu you are here. Uncle Fred, 
You are here. Did we not fly to Abuja to talk to our people in 2012 that this day will come when our neighbors and compatriots will come up again to try to take our assets and kill our people in order to retain it permanently? The proposal is that an asset protection and guarantee scheme be put in place in which an inventory is taken immediately of all the assets of the people of Lower Niger that are situated outside the territory. So that if anybody decides to take those assets, the owners will not have to sacrifice their life trying to protect them. An offshore-based insurance scheme, which has been discussed, ready to be concluded if people can document what they have and register with the appropriate authority that will be set up of the Lower Niger, that it is a scheme, almost a commercial scheme, in which you are in Kano, you have a house that can be sold for 30 million naira today. The people of Kano are planning who will take over your assets when they begin to kill people. You quietly go take your title document, go do valuation of it, get two witnesses who come from this area and who live in Kano and who are prepared to sign the paper to say if the yes that Mr. Okeke or Mr. owns this property and I think this property is sold today, it might fetch 30 million. When you've done that, the cost of insurance, we've had to travel far and wide in the United States to get the best bargains. The cost of insurance will be about 5 to 6 percent. Those who are the owners will have to contribute only 1 percent of the value of what they declare. And even before that contribution, let the documentation be done. The authority in the new ter in the territory will give you back whatever anybody decides to take away from you. Yeah. And therefore, we will not go back to what we suffered in 1970, no matter what the rest of Nigeria does. Therefore, we propose that that asset protection and guarantee scheme be put in place. Does the House approve of it? Yeah. Number four, carry on. The number five mandate sought before this Southern Assembly is one in which we have to accept that though being leaders of thought, we are not all encompassing in our wisdom. And therefore, our people in the towns and villages of the Lower Niger should be consulted. And how do you consult Abakanke people or Wari people? Town hall meetings, local radio, social media. The documents in your hand as you live here can be basis of town hall. The website you see here has all of the documents that you will need to show what you are talking about. You just challenge the young people with their phone and all of that to say, if we run quickly with this mandate, if this house will approve of it, that as we live here, those town hall meetings should take place. These flyers should be multiplied. If you have one set of flyers, you can make 1,000 copies of it, you can make 5,000 copies of it. Make sure there is no household in the entire Lower Niger that does not have what you have now. There are more that will come so that everybody will get to know. Those who have access to the internet will get to go. Those who have access to radio will announce to other people. So that in a matter of weeks, we should be able to ask our people whether they agree with us or not in a referendum. And therefore we say, let this honorable audience accept the mandate, accept to set up, accept to mandate the set up of an, you know, to, 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 to set up consultation by what town hall, both at home and at 
abroad. The international community, there are many foreign media houses here present. What we are saying here is being viewed live in Washington and London. Amen. Nigeria came to a small halt yesterday when that happened. How many of you saw the advertorial in Guardian yesterday? Please, copies are available here. Immediately that vanguard came, and that guardian came, people who went to church and who had fixed meetings for 3, 4 p.m. could not resume their planning because they realized that the end had come. Yes. We, we tried our best to get them from going into election so that we can resolve this matter. They told us to our faces that we did not matter and that, they, that our problem flow on the streets. Did the candidate in that election, the one they say he has won, did he not tell us that the blood of the baboon will mix with that of uh, the dog on the street if he was not corrupted? Whose blood was he talking about? As a lieutenant, you saw where they were shouting about genocide and genocide and uh, all kinds of uh, uh, what is it they say they want to go to do in ICC. They threaten the government, all kinds of things. And they say they will take Jonathan and the wife before the ICC because of election violence. Lieutenant Buhari was one of those who went about supervising the killing of innocent citizens in 1966 in a xenophobic operation against the people of the lower Niger. That was just 1966. Did anybody see on CNN the genocide of Armenia? Yes. Still running. Yes. Still topical. Yes. Did anybody see recently the latest Nazi war criminal? People who did a certain sentence in 1937, 1938, 1939. What is being haunted? What is it about Nigeria? What is it about our blood? that 1967 or 1966 or 1970 have become so remote that Washington and London that, that proclaim democracy and human rights do not want to recognize that if you allow the impunity to stand, it will grow. Muhammad Muhammad has not been brought to justice himself and his confederates in that mass killing of the people for where they come from. Therefore, we say we will be the town hall meetings, the town hall meetings should include consultations in the international arena to explain to everybody how we came to this decision. Is that decision carried to go to the town house yeah. at home and abroad? Yeah. Decision number five carried. Mandate number five to set up an all purpose committee from this gathering that will continue in consultations with people who did not get here amongst our people. Is that decision carried? Yeah. Finally, this August Assembly, so as it were, Lower Niger Congress proposes that this Assembly sends a message from this city to all of our people, those from any of these states, as Nigeria called them, from this territory, who may have been elected to go to Abuja as representative, who may be appointed as minister, who may be called upon to come to serve in any capacity in Abuja. This August body is being requested by Lower Niger Congress to mandate a recall, a return home for consultation before the business of governance in Abuja will continue. Those who are so affected, we are not telling them 
any particular thing other than to come home and consult before they proceed. Those of them who will refuse to come, of course, should know up front that they are in Abuja entirely on their own accord. Tony Inadi addressed the press on the overall aim of the solemn assembly. The map of Lower Niger, as can be found uh, on their website, lowernigercongress.org, of 1885, showing how the peoples of the Lower Niger, the ethnic nationalities of the 11 states, you know, to which Nigeria has fractured them, that map to be adopted as the as the as the geography of the territory we are discussing, you know the Ijo, the Shekiri, the Robo, the Ibo, all of the ethnics in those uh, 11 states, you know, have adopted that map of 1885 as the formations in which they will relate. Henceforth, the second decision is uh, that they have mandated a referendum. The, the the solemn assembly has mandated a referendum of the people in which uh, people just like the Scottish. Uh, referendum that happened recently will be deciding whether they want to continue in this union of attrition that Nigeria has proved uh, to be. Uh, there's also the mandate for uh, consult wider consultations with the people ahead of that referendum by way of town halls and the uh, consultation with the international uh, stakeholders. The assembly also decided that uh, an asset protection and guarantee scheme be put in place immediately to take an inventory of the assets of the peoples of Lower Niger situated outside the Lower Niger uh, so as to avoid the experiences of uh, 1970 in which they fled for their lives at the time genocide was being uh, levied against them from other parts of the country and in 1970, three years after they were dislocated from their places of abode, the government of Nigeria by decree seized their assets, called it abandoned properties and never returned to them. And today we are seeing a repetition of the threat by the same people who seize those assets, you know, against them. Uh, finally, the the assembly also uh, decided that uh, a standing committee, you know, uh, an all-purpose standing committee, be put in place to discuss with those who might not have come here on a continuing basis, both local and international. Uh, I think they also we also decided that. Uh, People from the lower Niger who, for some either by appointment or election, uh, will be uh, required to come to form government or do government business in Abuja on behalf of the peoples of lower Niger from any part. Uh, the, the assembly mandated a recall for consultation. They must come home and discuss with the rest of the people, otherwise, they will be there entirely on their own. You know, uh, it doesn't matter that some people are rejoicing that elections have been held and, you know, uh, Winners imagine, whether by appointment or by election, if you are of the lower Niger and you are in Abuja to be part of the governance of that territory but with the rest of Nigeria, we are requesting that you come home for consultation before you continue in that transaction. Banners and placards by the ethnic delegations were unfolded, demanding an immediate referendum to determine their political future. The closing remarks and vote of thanks on behalf of the conveners was taken by veteran Niger Delta self-determination activist and head of the Ijo National Delegation to the Assembly, Elder Tike Ogoriba.
In the outside, she's come inside and take pictures. Why, 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 why